Nutrient density is basically the quantity and distribution of nutrients based on calories. Like the FDA states, it's the ratio of the amount of beneficial nutrients relative to the food's energy. Based on the evidence to suggest a role in chronic diseases, as well as information to ensure sufficient intakes of essential nutrients, acceptable macronutrient distribution ranges have been estimated for individuals. These are carbohydrates 45 to 65 percent, fat 20 to 35, protein 10 to 35. Notice how the lower percentage of energy that's recommended from carbohydrates is still higher than the highest of both fat and protein and carbohydrates are found exclusively in plants along with the perfect ratio and distribution of fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The daily recommended intake for fiber showing greatest protection against coronary heart disease is 14 grams a day per thousand calories. And like carbohydrates, fiber is only found in plants. It is thus recommended that saturated fatty acid, trans fatty acid, and cholesterol consumption be as low as possible while consuming a nutritionally adequate diet. It's also worth mentioning that trans fatty acid and cholesterol is found exclusively in animal flesh and secretion. And even the molecular structure of saturated fatty acid in animal flesh is different than that of saturated fat coming from plants. Meanwhile, the safest source of the most beneficial monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, like the essential alpha linolenic omega-3 fatty acids, are most prevalent in the plant kingdom. The following nutrient profile demonstrations are based on 500 calories using USDA data. When comparing soy to beef, soy is 13% more nutrient dense than beef. Soy reached 57% of all nutrient targets whereas ground beef only met 44% of all nutrient targets. And here we can see a breakdown of how those nutrients were distributed, protein, vitamins, minerals, fats, carbohydrates. And under beef on the bottom left, you can see the trans fats and cholesterol appropriately highlighted in red. I've listed them here. Soy is higher across 16 nutrients, including all three macros. That's 10 more than beef. Kale is 31% more nutrient dense than beef. Kale met 75% of all targets. Ground beef still only 44%. Again, here's the nutrient breakdown. And of course, the highlighted nutrients are the ones that are higher. So kale came in higher across 19 nutrients, including two macros. And that third macro, protein, it was the same as beef, except beef had dangerous levels of methionine, the sulfur-containing amino acid that's been shown to be detrimental to health. Steak is only able to meet 49% of all nutrient targets, whereas kale, 75%. Kale is 26% more nutrient dense than steak. Here's that nutrient breakdown. Kale was higher across 18 nutrients, including two macros. Again, protein, it was almost the same, except for steak has more methionine and just a fractional amount more of cysteine. Lentils are 5% more nutrient dense than steak. Steak, again, 49% of nutrient targets were met, but lentils had 54% of nutrient targets met. In steak's protein section on the top left, you can see where I've highlighted in red excessive amounts of methionine, and in the bottom lipid section, the dangerous levels of trans fats found in steak. Lentils were higher across 16 nutrients, including two macros. Again, that third was only higher in steak due to methionine, and this time there was an insignificant difference between two other amino acids. Romaine lettuce is 75% more nutrient dense than steak. Black beans are 1% more nutrient dense than steak. Green peas are 6% more nutrient dense than steak. Broccoli is 28% more nutrient dense than steak. Now let's look at liver. Chicken liver is 1% more nutrient dense than beef liver. But romaine is 7% more nutrient dense than chicken liver. Kale is 7% more nutrient dense than chicken liver. Broccoli is 9% more nutrient dense than chicken liver. So much for liver. And need I say, it's a lot easier to grow romaine, broccoli, or kale in my own backyard than it is to grow a liver. The animals people eat acquired their nutrients from plants. That animal's DNA created the proteins and fats it needed for its specific body, not yours. As a result, when you eat that animal, you're eating a high calorie processed food depleted of vitamins and minerals with dangerous levels of certain amino acids and fatty acids 
So the moral of the story, food is a package deal. Animals are not food. Eating them comes with no fiber, no carbohydrates, no phytonutrients, 64 times less antioxidants, trans fats, cholesterol, oxidized heme iron, excessive protein and sulfur containing amino acids, endotoxins, mechanistic target of rapamycin, trimethylamine and oxide, insulin-like growth factor one, advanced glycation end products, and glycolyolneraminic acid, palmitic acid, heterocyclic amines, arachidonic acid, chronic diseases, zoonotic diseases, a larger footprint, antibiotics, and antibiotic resistant bacteria, hormones, bioaccumulated environmental toxins, animal abuse and slaughter, and the most by kill, all of which fosters a violent culture, to name a few. Plants, on the other hand, come with all the macros. After all, they created them like the air we breathe. Fiber, phytonutrients, more vitamins, more minerals, better fats, and a better distribution of proteins and nutrients overall. Because they're the perfect food. 